Hey everyone, my name is Nick Sulo. I'm an artist with a background in visual effects, working for the film and TV industry for the past decade. I'm also the co-creator of Exulo, that's known for creating the techno dystopia surreal artworks. So in this tutorial, I want to cover some basics of color and design and how we can use color to make an image feel more balanced, uh, which will help the overall composition of the artwork. So before jumping into the artwork uh, itself, let's take a quick look at the overall color wheel, which I always like to reference back to when making any art. So the color wheel is composed of your uh, primary colors like blue and purple as your secondary color and tertiary like violet. So we don't have to go into the details on the meaning of each of these groups, but overall what's a good thing to keep in mind is the role of complementary colors. So the, what that is, is where you can take one color, let's say like orange as a secondary color, and it's complementary color is the opposite is blue. So you can really use these two colors like blue and orange in your art to help balance it and give some contrast elements that allows the eye to kind of wander around the image. So let's jump into the 3D scene and we can play around with these two colors to kind of show what I mean. So I went ahead and put this scene together in Maya just to kind of quickly demonstrate the way we can play around with these colors. So right now it already kind of has a bit of a, like a monochromatic feel to it, meaning it's just one tone being orange in this scene. So we don't really want to have that in this tutorial. So we'll go ahead and dial that back so we actually get some start to kind of see it in this. We still lose these objects in the sand. So the next thing we can go ahead and do is change these objects to more of a the opposite color of orange being blue. So like right away, the tone's a bit bright and maybe a little too saturated. So it kind of pops maybe too much in comparison from the sand to the object. So maybe we can dial back the saturation a little bit and the value. So that way you can already kind of see the objects, they have the opposite of one another with the color, but also there's a nice balance to it now, as opposed to being flat and kind of monochromatic. We have these kind of nice colors happening here with the blues and the oranges. We can even just pump up the saturation a little bit more. We can even play around with like the reflection, the glossiness, just can be kind of nice to add some spec to it. But then again, we do tend to lose some of the object right here uh, from the sky. So maybe dial back that reflection a little bit. So we're still kind of losing the rocks a little bit in comparison to the sand. Um, I feel like they, they are blending into one another a little too much. So maybe we can bring down the value of these rocks. Let's so maybe darken them up just a little bit. Don't want to go too dark, but Especially this one, it's a little too bright. Even darken the back one a little bit. If you bring down the value of this one right here, we kind of start seeing the sphere a little bit more. But now everything feels maybe just a little, it's one of those like minute detail tweaks kind of helps have a little more balance and composition in the piece now now you can kind of tell the difference between the sand and the rock formations with the rock formations now being just a little bit darker as opposed to being too bright before So 
So maybe we can even play with the colors of the objects being blue. Maybe we can change the value and the saturation of them. So say like we want the sphere to be where our eye focuses on. We can actually kind of take these objects on the side and the cubes in the foreground and bring down the uh, value, but still keep it in within the blue colors. So we'll go ahead and maybe introduce a new new colors for these rectangle shapes. So yeah, already the fact that we've brought down these colors for this, uh, we can start to already see like our eye would want to naturally go towards the sphere. So we can really use color in the value within the uh, blue spectrum, but also have it kind of draw our eyes uh, compositionally so we focus more into the centerpiece for say we want the sphere to be where our eye goes to right away so we can really play with that with bringing down the value of these these cubes so I also want to show before and after of where we started with the monochromatic orangish red tone on the left and then the final image on the right um, so already right away with adding and introducing these blue tones into the scene and bringing down the overall redness of the image, uh, the colors help with the composition overall. Um, our eye kind of wants to kind of gravitate towards the center and as opposed to on the left, our eye kind of wanders all over the place because the colors are way too similar in terms of that and the objects start to get lost in the image as well. So you can really kind of tell where color helps um, lead the eye around the, the image or where you want your eye to go towards in an image. And that's a really useful, helpful uh, thing to have with using color. Let's go ahead and explore a little bit further with color in another scene. So maybe something opposite of this late evening dry desert terrain and start introducing other color tones. Maybe we want to do something more moonlit, cool tone. So let's go ahead and jump into that right now. I went ahead and put this scene together using Quixel Bridge plugin from Maya, where I was able to drop in these different elements, like the tree trunk in the foreground with the axe sticking out of it and a rocky forested background as well. Let's go ahead and play around more with the colors and maybe introduce some other colors opposed to these cool tones. So. We can go ahead and bring in maybe a, a warmer color on screen, right? And right away, what's really nice about this, because you know it already has this uh, cool tone in it. Now we're introducing in these warmer colors, which kind of adds more contrast and gives more shape to the stump. And it kind of brings it out some of the highlights, even in the ax, which is really nice. And it, in a way, the color kind of tells a story like maybe there's a fireplace or a fire camp off on the right that's kind of starting to light up this scene. So already, as opposed to before, kind of this moonlight set up, which is okay, but you know, it doesn't feel like there's as much going on and it doesn't make it as an interesting image. So then we turn back on the that warm lighting, which is really nice already. And then maybe it feels maybe a little too, too cool. And even bring down some of the lighting, the cool tones. And what would be even nice to do is in the background, we can even cool it down even more and this will help push back the background even further and then maybe put a little bit more focus on the tree stump and the ax. So yeah, we'll just start adding in some more of the cool tones in the background. And maybe change the angle of the warm light. Maybe it's not shining so much on the trees in the background. Maybe have it focus more on the 
the tree stump and the ax and already our eye is going to naturally go uh, to the tree stump and the ax as opposed to having it, some of that warm light bleed into the background. Yeah, we might have maybe brightened up that warm light just a little bit too much so we can always bring it down just a little bit, make it a little more subtle. So yeah, like I said, this already kind of helps the uh, trees in the background. They don't have that warm lighting hitting them anymore. So the background already feels a little more pushed back and kind of see the shadow line. It, everything kind of being able to tell the difference between the mid ground and the foreground, it really helps with the composition with lighting and these the colors. So already it's it's looking looking in a better spot. So let's go ahead and go back to the previous image, just the overall touch base on what we've done with this one again. And uh, as mentioned, these shapes do kind of bleed back into the sand and you just everything kind of feels flat as opposed to when you look at the image above. With this added cool blue color tones, our eye tends to want to go to like the foreground, maybe the center cube or wander over to this left cube. But ultimately, our eye will kind of want to wander to the center point. So it really drives the composition overall when we introduce these other colors as opposed to having this more monochromatic look. We can also go ahead and check out the, the axe shot too. So as mentioned, it does have like a moonlight on screen right in this image. But the problem with this is that the axe, we kind of lose it. It almost kind of pushes back in and almost like disappears into the background. So we really want to highlight that, especially even the stump as well. So when we introduce this warm light, we're able to, as mentioned, get that shape in the stump, which is really nice, and even kind of draw this outline around the axe as well with uh, the light. And it really makes it pump up and pop out. And you know the axe wanting to be the, the centerpiece of the image, so that's really important to, to be able to highlight that. We have a nice little uh, line going across here from the light. And then um, making sure that this warm light isn't affecting the background. So, so I hope you enjoyed uh, this video today on color and lighting. Uh, there's definitely going to be more to come on NVIDIA Studio. So just keep an eye out on that. And uh, we'll see you then.